you've got an image in Photoshop, and this is Photoshop, all the versions of Photoshop I've ever known have got displacements. So filter and distort and displace. Now it hasn't been updated for ages. Now it's one of those filters that uh, you select and you can apply it to an image, you can apply it to a layer, you can apply it to shapes, all kinds of different things. And what do you can do? Horizontal scale. Now you can go for a very basic initial one, like say 10 and 10, just go for 10 and 10, creates a very, very subtle displacement. You can also stretch to fit or tile. Personally, I always go stretch to fit, but I can vary it. Also wrap around or repeat edge. Now personally, I prefer wrap around so you get the pixels from the bottom moved up to the top, but it's a preference. Click OK. And what you need to do is select a PSD file. Now I've got this one, a PSD file. I've just called it one.psd. It could be anything, but it needs to be a PSD file. Click open and straight away you can see that. There's no preview, there's no what's name. You just basically run in as with that file. And the result can be quite spectacular. You can see the result here. It gives a nice painting effect. You can also again go to filter and displace. And you can apply it again. All it does, of course, is applies exactly the same setting. So let's just undo that. Again, filter distort and displace. That's where it is. So select there, and this, you don't have to go with just 10. You could go for minus 50. So it's a scale of minus 50, so it will do at 50%, and you can say 20%. So it's minus 50, 20, you can do 200, minus 200, all those sort of things. Also, you can say stretch to fit. So I'm just gonna go with that instead of tile. So instead of the very small sort of displacement, you're going to get a more chunky displacement now. Click OK. And again, select 1.psd. Click Open. And you can see what happens. It's just distorted it, but it's a lot more substantial distortion. But it's uh, obviously you don't get that fine detail. You get really nice sort of warps and weaves there. So... What are the files that I'm using? Well, they're very basic files and you can create any design as long as it's a PSD file. So PSD, here's a PSD file. Now, just undo this. And all it is is just made up of my just drawing. That's all I'm doing. I'm using this feature of pattern preview. So view and pattern preview. So pattern preview with that on, what you can do, you can just go over here and it needs to be grayscale doesn't have to be, of course, you can make it in colours, but it's just as easy just to do it grayscale to start with. However, just go for one of those, select a brush, so any of these brush things, just change the size, maybe go for 11 or 12, and now with this pattern preview on, what you can do, just, just draw. Just draw very squiggles like this, just anything. Just subtle lines, circles, all kinds of different designs. Now, you can also change it, so maybe you want to go for lighter or darker, and that will vary the actual response of the actual displacement. So I'm just going to go for some black in there, I'm just going to create some dots, and you can see the result once I apply it. So you've got this design. Now this is this pattern, it's a seamless design, spread out off to eternity. So again, go back here. Now I can use that displacement, but before I do that, I need to save it. So file and save. I'll just save it as a one.psd. So just quickly save it, go back here, and then go to filter and distort and displace. And again, you can use the same settings or maybe go for say 20 and 20. Stretch to fit, click okay, select the file, one.psd, and click open and you can see the result of your dis there. That's all that happens, just distorts it that way. Or you can always go to filter, distort and displace, and this time use tile. Maybe 20, let's just go for something bigger, 50 and 50. So you can just change it, change your mind, click OK. Again, unfortunately you have to select the PSD file, and you can see the result there. And you can see, obviously the circular designs, that was the black that I was using as 
you can see it's more substantial sort of the way it's moved just using that. So if you just go back to this one, you can see these circular designs there and you can see the circular designs there. The other designs which were in the slightly lighter gray, less substantial movement. And you can of course go here again, filter and displace. And you can displace again, because just what it does, it just makes it drift further and further off in that direction, depending on the settings. And you can undo, just undo it. But also what you can do with this, of course, you can always go with filter, distort, displace. And this time I'm gonna use exactly the same file. So maybe set it to 200 and 200. Gain tile, click OK, select the file, click open. And you can apply it like that. But what you can also do is you can always go to filter and you can repeat it. So you can repeat that there, just displace. Or you can go to edit and you can fade it. So edit and fade displace. And now you've got blend modes. So you can turn around and say, well, I don't want it to be just normal. I want linear. And you can see the result there. So you can create a variety of different designs. And I sort of uh, makes it enough look like it's snowing. The color dodge, overlay, and so on and so on. So you can go through these, soft light, hard light, just vary it, vivid light. And you can see the result. So it's very different depending on different blend. Now, once you've applied it, say you've got this effect and you think, you know what, ah, it's okay, but it's a bit harsh. Well, personally, what I normally do when I do the distort, quite often I just go to filter and stylize and oil paint and just set it like that. So you can just see, so oil paint combined with displays, I think really works really well. And you might like just to reduce the sort of stylization cleanliness, obviously you don't want to push it too far, just a subtle sort of smudging there. And maybe works even nicer if you actually go, let's undo that. Go to filter, distort and displace. This time you stretch to fit and I'm using 200. So click there, select that file, click open and you can see the result there. And again, go to filter, stylize and oil paint afterwards and apply and click OK. And you can see it just makes it nice, smooth, and more quite surrealistic effect when you actually see the distortions here. You can see parts of this, obviously the beach suddenly moved over at different places. You see parts off there and that's just been moved up. So it's a variety of different designs. However, let's just undo that again. You don't have to go with squiggles like that. Of course, you could go for far more complex designs or even more basic designs. Don't have to do it now. I'm just un quickly undoing all that. Maybe decide, you know what? Just put some text. So you can put some text there. So text. Now, unfortunately, with this pattern preview feature, this it's really quite good in terms of, you just go over here and you can see it does have a tendency to go wrong. You can see it's sort of making a bit of a mistake there. But you can put that in there and you can always hold down the alter option key and duplicate that design and then it does it right. So it's you can actually see it nicely, seamless design like that. And again, you can then, hold down the alter option key and duplicate that. And you can just fill this up. And I obviously don't have to, don't have to do that at all, but you can fill the, of course, create all this, go to layer and flatten image. Now this, again, you can just save it. So file and save. So now you've got text. Well, again, go to here, filter, and you can go to distort and displace. So now this time I've got 200 there, I've got stretch to fit. So I'm just gonna, just gonna use the whole thing that's gonna be stretched out to the size of this image. And it, that other one, I don't know what the size is, but it's fairly small in comparison with this. So set there, click okay. And again, unfortunately you have to select that. Be nice if there was a drop down, there isn't. And you can see then you get text written in massive letters all across. So you can distort your image using text as well. And again, of course, you can always apply it again if you want, or again, filter, go to stylize and oil paint. Maybe just to sort of smudge it and blur it a bit. I just think it just looks nicer that way. And again, filter, and you can go down to distort, displace, and this time use tile. So you can see the result there, 200, don't have to be. Maybe go for 50 and 50, or minus 50 and 50. Click okay, and again, select the PSD file, 
click open and you can see your result there of text that's been applied it's just moved or you can see parts of the beach there parts of the sky there everything's moved around just very subtle and again always play it again displays and you can see you can create very rapidly all kinds of distortions of images now you don't have to apply it just to an image of course you got this this there you can just duplicate it so go to layer and you can duplicate the layer let's just click OK and then I'm just going to resize now I'm going to make it slightly small you can see obviously that layer there you can apply your displacements to that as well oh anything else as well of course it could be just text it could be layers shapes all those sort of things and again layer apply various effects but go to filter and distort and displays and you can then enter game 50 or 50 maybe go for 100 150 like that again go for tile or stretch and I'm just gonna go with that one click OK again select that file click open and you can see the result there you have got the text actually the layer just ends up a lot bigger so again apply again you can see it applied out like that and of course once you've got this design you can see the design there you can move it around you can also go to the layers panel and let's just see oh that's the properties typical oh there's the layers there's the layer one and now a key panel really have useful I think is swatches as well as layers because let's say you need it to be grayscale so you've got your layer there well you can always go to layer and layer style oh doesn't want to let me select I've got to select it key thing make certain you select the layer go to layer layer style and bevel emboss and again you can then apply you can see then the effect there and you can just change that setting maybe go for inner bevel and so on and so on just try them out just soften size just change things and you can see the result if you've got your displacement there click OK and of course you can always distort this even more so you've got this design got this lovely displacement design here well you can always go to edit and you've got transform so transform and warp so you can just warp it and you can warp that design so you can just create all kinds of nice distortions from your displaced text you got that image there undo that so exact the same don't have to use text again it could be exactly the same you could just use let's just remove that Again, key panel for this swatches really useful if you're using it with brushes you don't have to use brushes you could use of course shapes or gradients all those sort of things but brushes are handy so because you can just create all kinds of it really that's all it really needs just a couple of lines you might not want to do it like that sort of make it stretch like that and you can always go the other way maybe you want to sort of all kinds of different designs can be just created just using a pen or a mouse of course you can use a mouse to do this create a very basic design it's seamless you can see no seams here obviously you can see the repeating pattern can't do much about that unfortunately but again file and save so very rapidly you can create a new design then go here again you got your design here resize that just going to create another layer let's just quickly create another layer I've just got rid of that layer so move that there and again exactly the same as before you can go filter down to distort and displays and you've got 100 150 go for 300 now I'm not certain if there's a limit probably is probably a thousand or something 500 or something like that and again you can go for tile or stretch to fit repeated perfectly reasonable click OK and again select one dot PSD with that file just created and you can see the result of that you can see you've got this lovely sort of nice just creating a couple of lines very basic lines and again you've got this layer that you can then manipulate let's just move that away the swatches now you've got your layer there you can reposition it or go to layer and again layer style bevel emboss and you can see you can add some lovely effects to that contour change that go for drop shadow let's just go for drop shadow down there does make it quite dark I don't want that maybe as dark as that size that there just change the distance and you can see the result of that and of course you can always hold down the alter option key 
it's a layer, just a standard layer, and you can duplicate that design and duplicate that and create all kinds of really quite wonderful designs, very quick and easy, just using basically a couple of lines, just using a pen and just creating this displacement. Very easy to create all kinds of very abstract designs, warp designs in any fashion you want, circular designs, triangular designs, star designs, etc. Hope you found this tutorial of interest. Thank you much.